Do our worldviews change or evolve? If so, is there a typical developmental pattern to them? If so, what does that tell us about where we're going in the future? Hi, Mark Gilbert here, and in this brief video we're going to answer those questions and more by covering a quick overview of the theory of spiral dynamics, one of the most useful tools that I have come across for understanding the personal and cultural evolution of humanity, yet one that I found is not well known in the mainstream. At the outset, let me say that to fully grasp the depth of this theory, it would take much longer, days or weeks, than this brief introduction can get into. But I think you can understand the essential concepts in just a few minutes. However, I would recommend that you've watched the video on world views in connection with this one. Spiral dynamics comes from the work of social scientist Claire Graves in the 1970s. For decades before, he had been researching the value systems of individuals. Now, a value system is simply a set of values that a person or a group holds that ethically guides their decisions and behavior. It also plays a part in establishing their identity as a person or a group. People like me act this way and think this way, that kind of thing. Graves' research over years showed that following the same people, that their values changed as their lives changed, and that everyone tended to move through the same consistent set of values. In other words, as children, we all start out with the same set of values, but as we master those life conditions as a child, a second set of values emerges to guide us in our lives as our new world conditions evolve. And then another set of values, and so on and so on. Graves first published his work in Futurist magazine in the 1970s, but it was only later with the assistance of Don Beck and Chris Cowan in the book Spiral Dynamics in the 1990s that the theory became more into the public light. And at that time they also added color codes for the value levels. And the name Spiral Dynamics was created. Now to simplify the theory a bit, let's consider that the value systems described in Spiral Dynamics are really the same as the world views we discussed in that video. So what this theory is suggesting to us is that we as humans all evolve through a common path of the same consistent sequence of world views. This sequence can be seen as applying to the life of one individual who's born on the planet. As mentioned, one from birth starts at the very first viewpoint and as they grow and develop and as their lives around them change, the next viewpoint emerges to guide them and then the next and the next, leading into adulthood where they typically tend to settle into one world view which guides their lives the most. Although one can continue to evolve into further higher world views in the sequence as an adult, there is a greater tendency to settle into one and simply stay there. However, we can also see the groups of people, cultures, societies, since they're made up of individuals with the various world views, that they go through the same sequence as individuals. And as they feed off one another in our desire to fit in, think about Maslow's level of social needs, we can begin to see how and why certain groups tend to think alike. Yet these groups can live side by side in modern life and see and think differently, leading us to understand just a little bit about the culture wars that we see. Finally, this developmental sequence of worldviews can be seen from an historical perspective, going back to the origin of humanity, where the earlier worldviews were prevalent, and as we evolved as a species, more and newer worldviews emerged to meet newer human needs. In this regards, we can see that some worldviews only came about in the recent past, and new ones are still being birthed as humanity develops. So what is the sequence of these common worldviews? Spiral dynamics maps a system of nine or more levels of consciousness or worldviews through which humans move in order. For reason describing the levels, they're, as mentioned, they're color-coded, although the colors assigned have no particular significance. These levels alternate between a focus on the external world and attempts to change it, and a focus on our inner world and attempts to come to peace with it. When charted, the pattern of evolutionary consciousness represents or resembles a spiral. New life conditions bring new levels of thinking, which bring new life conditions in an ever-repeating upward pattern. Consider first early man who was faced with basic conditions of basic survival. This beige survival sense level of existence gave rise to a worldview related to purely meeting biological needs. 
We became aware that we were distinct cells, began to sense cause and effect on the outer world, and developed heightened sensory abilities to simply survive in that world. However, as we began to meet those needs, we sensed a desire to foster group support, to support meeting our challenges in life. Hence, there arose the second, or purple, kin spirits level of existence, where we formed tribes to create safety and security. Here there emerged the belief in mystical spirits in nature, a seasonal sense of time, and the development of myth and tradition. However, as needs were met at this level, the security of the tribe was disrupted eventually by the emergence of the personal ego, and the sense that the self was more powerful than the tribe. This third, or red, or power god's level of existence brought forth our power impulses, might is right, a spontaneous guilt-free, daring nature, the desire for immediate gratification, and a lack of concern for consequences. Historically, these were the powerful warlords creating the system of those in power and those who submitted to the powerful. Yet as our needs at this level were met, we began to reflect upon the unfairness of this system of haves and have-nots. This gave search to the belief that there are forces guiding our destiny and a need to understand the underlying rules of life, giving rise to the fourth, or blue, truth force level of existence. Here we find a desire for meaning and purpose, a sacrifice now for rewards later, order and rules, and a need to control our impulses, causing our newly found guilt. Historically, this level gave rise to major religions, or systems of laws, and so on. However, as the needs at this level were met, we began to question the cost we paid in the loss of individual freedom due to absolutist rules. In the fifth, or orange, strive-drive level of existence, we began to question these rules, authority, and the delayed gratification of our needs. We began to strive to conquer the world, unlock its secrets, and achieve personal material success. We sought pleasure in the life now, not in the future. This level saw rise to goal planning economic competition in the pursuit of scientific truths. But alas, our material success didn't give us the happiness we be and we began to turn inward to find our truth. The sixth or green level or human bond level of existence saw us begun to seek consensus, consensus for decisions, pursue humanitarian efforts and display a tolerance of personal differences. We sought harmony through belonging, acceptance, community, unity, and an understanding of our own inner nature. It's important to note that these six first-tier levels are characterized by the fact that if you look at life through one of them, you don't recognize there's other valid ways of looking at life. We can see this playing out in the world today as the various religious fundamentalists, blue, have conflict with one another over whose truth, order, and God is the right one. We begin to understand why popular writ books written by scientists at the orange level are driven to deny that God, or more accurately, the God at the blue level, exists. We start to understand why often well-intentioned humanitarians who are living at the green level assist, and they desire to assist the conditions in third world countries, see their work as confiscated by local leaders at the red level who have not developed the conscious and rules that come at the higher blue system. Ironically, it's thought that maybe these chaotic life conditions of a modern world where all these viewpoints are competing and battling for control, that they might contribute to the next stages that have been emerging in consciousness. These next levels are considered within spiral dynamics as a great leap to what's called second tier consciousness. And at the heart of what make, marks this evolutionary leap is the realization that this developmental path of worldviews exists and why we don't always see and make choices from the same perspectives. In other words, we became aware of this spiral and how it impacts us and that's what pushes us to the second tier. At the second tier levels of yellow, called flex flow, and turquoise, called global view, and the continuous emergence of still higher levels of potential, spiral dynamics shows that we begin to understand the big picture view of living systems and the evolutionary flow of life, where chaos and change are just a natural part of it. We begin to see the role that we each play in our own evolution. We begin to honor and respect others' beliefs and worldviews without necessarily agreeing with them. We acknowledge the connection between spirituality and physics. We focus on and see the good in all living entities. 
we expand our use of brain and mind tools for developing consciousness. We see the individual self as part of a larger, conscious, spiritual whole that also serves the self. And we value the spiritual beliefs of all the other levels as we stand in awe of this overall cosmic order. As we step back from the model of spiral dynamics for a moment, we can see that it offers us an evolutionary path for our value systems or worldviews, one similar to Maslow's hierarchy in relation to our needs and that this path tends to move from what we might call human to what we might see as spiritual. More on spiral dynamics in a later video. Till next time.